Udham Singh, the judge, jury and executioner, the freedom fighter turned assassin, the man who strived to deliver justice to his mother nation. He took matters into his own hands in order to right the wrongs done to his country. A true freedom fighter, Udham Singh is an iconic and illustrious figure whose sacrifices are forever etched into the history of India's freedom struggle. This is the story of the Punjab revolutionary Shaheed e Azam Sardar Udham Singh, known as the Lone Assassin and the Patient Assassin, who dedicated his life to honor the death of his countrymen. Early Life and Education Udham Singh was born as Sheer Singh on 26th December 1899 to a Cambodge Sikh family in Sunam in the Sangroor district of Punjab. His father, Tehal Singh, worked as a farmer as well as a watchman at the Uppalli railway crossing. He had an elder brother named Sadhu. Their mother, Narayan Kaur, passed away in 1901 when Udham Singh was only three years old. This was soon followed by the death of their father in 1907, when, while travelling on foot to Amritsar, he collapsed and eventually passed away in the Ram Bagh Hospital. Both the boys had to subsequently live their lives in the central Khalsa orphanage Putlighar, located in Amritsar, since their initiation on 28th October. It was during this time that both brothers underwent baptism into the Sikh religion and changed their names. Sadhu became Mukta Singh and Sher Singh was renamed as Udham Singh but went by as Uday to those at the orphanage. In 1917, his brother Mukta Singh suddenly passed away from an unknown illness. Later, Udham Singh passed his matriculation exam in 1918 and finally left the orphanage, where he grew up in the year 1919 to join the British Indian Army in the First World War as a manual labourer travelling overseas. Political Life The act that changed Udham Singh's life and set him on the path to be an assassin was the Jallianwala Bagh massacre that resulted in the death of hundreds of innocent Indians. The event sparked such hatred in a 20-year-old Singh that he vowed to take revenge against one of the main perpetrators of the carnage, Michael O'Dyer. Jallianwala Bagh massacre, considered to be one of the most atrocious acts committed in the history of India, the Jallianwala Bagh tragedy in Amritsar also known as the Amritsar Massacre, is a violent and heinous crime carried out by the British against the Indians. On April 13, 1919, a large crowd of over 20,000 unarmed Indians had peacefully gathered at Jallianwala Bagh in Amritsar to celebrate the Vaisakhi or Baisakhi festival and also to protest against the Rowlett Act passed on 10th March 1919 by the British government in India. The act gave unfair advantage to the police officials to misuse their power against the Indians, enabling the police to arrest any individual without trial for their engagement in any revolutionary activities. The protesters also aimed to raise voice against the arrest of the political activists Dr. Saifuddin Kichliu and Dr. Satyapal, who were imprisoned by the government for organizing a protest against the Rowlett Act. Previously, an order had been issued by Brigadier General Reginald Dyer that prohibited any and all unlawful gathering of the public. When the report of such a gathering at Jallianwala Bagh reached the general, he organized a small army and reached the site with them. Upon entry, he ordered his troop to open fire on the unsuspecting group without giving any warning. The Bagh was designed in such a way 
that it was surrounded by buildings on three sides and therefore had only one entry or exit point. As soon as the firing started, the gathered individuals rushed towards the exit to save themselves. Their efforts were in vain. As the soldiers were firing at the same exit, reports of the incident state that 1,650 rounds were fired for 10 to 15 minutes continuously till the guns ran out of ammunition. Hundreds of innocents lost their lives as a result of the unwarranted firing with over a thousand people wounded to varying degrees. Udham Singh was present as a witness to the entire massacre as he was involved in the protest by providing water to the members. The large number of bodies of his own friends and countrymen lying in pools of blood and surrounded by death triggered his own hatred and violent feelings towards the British government. From that moment onwards, his goal was to avenge the death of his people by punishing the individuals behind the crime, namely General Dyer and Michael O'Dwyer, the then governor of Punjab, who approved Dyer's actions in the incident. Involvement in Ghadar Party The Ghadar Party was a revolutionary political organization formed in the United States in 1930 by a group of Indian expatriates or Punjabi Sikh immigrants who launched the International Ghadar Movement with the sole aim of ending the British rule in India. After working as a labourer in East Africa during early 1920s, Udham Singh eventually travelled to USA. There, he came across some of the members of the Ghadar Party in San Francisco and subsequently became a core member of the political organization in the year 1924. He was involved in organizing the Indians towards achieving their goal of overthrowing the British Empire. For this purpose, he traveled extensively all across America under different names such as Frank Brazil to garner support for their goals. However, he was ordered by Bhagat Singh to return to India and he soon arrived in his country in the year 1927 to help his countrymen return to India and imprisonment. On his return to India, Udham Singh brought with him various firearms as well as ammunition. He also carried copies of the Ghadar Di Gunj or Voice of Revolt paper by the Ghadar party that was prohibited by the British government. Consequently, he was arrested by the police for the possession of illegal arms and the banned paper, which were confiscated from Singh. He was imprisoned for a period of five years. Singh was very closely monitored by the Punjab police upon his release in October 1931, but he somehow evaded their surveillance to arrive at Kashmir and then proceeded to escape to Germany under an alias. From there, he was able to get to London in the year 1934. Life in London in London, Singh was able to find employment as a carpenter and motor mechanic. Reportedly, he also worked as an actor for a brief period of time. His acting career included working as an extra in two films made by Alexander Korda, The Elephant Boy in 1937 and The Four Feathers in 1939. In addition to this, Singh was a member of the London-based Indian Workers' Association or IWA and he worked as a part of the organization. But throughout his stay in London and while working multiple jobs, Odham Singh was simultaneously planning his revenge against Michael O'Dwyer, even though he had several opportunities to carry out the assassination, Singh patiently planned and waited for the ideal chance that will produce the maximum political impact on the British forces. This opportunity soon came to him. 
in 1940 when O'Dwyer was scheduled to attend a meeting in London. Assassination of Michael O'Dwyer on 13th March 1940, Michael Francis O'Dwyer was present in the Caxton Hall in London to attend the joint meeting between the East India Association and the Royal Central Asian Society. Udham Singh was also present as one of the attendees. He carried a revolver with him that was bought from a soldier at a pub. Reports state that Singh hid the revolver in a book that had its pages cut out in the shape of the firearm to accommodate it in a manner that would prevent its detection. Towards the end, when the meeting was winding down, Singh got up and shot O'Dwyer twice as the latter was moving towards the podium. O'Dwyer died instantly from one of the shots fired by Singh that went through his heart and right lung. Several others were also injured in the shooting. Singh did not attempt to escape and was immediately arrested at the scene by the police. Trial and death Odham Singh was jailed in the Brixton prison. He never tried to deny his actions or his motivation behind the crime and accepted complete responsibility of the shooting. In prison, he went by the name Ram Muhammad Singh Azad to demonstrate the religious unity of his country to the first three names that stood for the three major religions in India, Hinduism, Islam and Sikhism, and also to show his anti-colonial feelings through the last name Azad that stood for freedom. He also went on a lengthy hunger strike in prison that lasted for 42 days. The authorities had to intervene to end it by forcefully feeding him through a tube. Soon his trial started on June 4, 1940 at the Central Criminal Court in Old Bailey, where Singh justified his actions against the British government by stating the need for vengeance. He was convicted of murder and sentenced to be executed. On July 31, 1940, Udham Singh was hanged to death at the Pentonville Prison in London. His body was buried in the prison grounds itself. However, in 1974, his remains were repatriated to India and cremated at his hometown. His ashes were preserved in multiple locations in Punjab as an honour to the brave and courageous soul who sacrificed his life for his country. Legacy The title of shaheed e azam was conferred to the Jallianwala Bagh Avenger by the Indian government to honour his strength and bravery. The day of his death, July 31, is observed as a martyrdom day in the states of Punjab and Haryana. The Uttarakhand government in October 1995 dedicated a district in Uttarakhand to the great martyr by naming it as Odham Singh Nagar after him. Further, the official name of his ancestral town, Sonam, was also changed to Sonam Odham Singh Wala in his honour. Another act of homage to him includes the Shaheed Odham Singh Chowk in Anubgarh, Rajasthan, that was named after him. Singh's room in the central Khalsa orphanage, along with his ancestral home in Sonam, where he spent his early years, has been converted into a museum. The Indian government also released stamp in honour of Udham Singh in 1992. On March 13, 2018, a 10 feet statue of Udham Singh was set up at the main entrance of Jallianwala Park by the International Sarva Kamboj Samaj in order to remember the actions of the great hero who avenged the death of his fallen friends and countrymen. There have been numerous dedications made to Udham Singh by the entertainment industry in India. One such tribute to him was made by the Asian Dub Foundation who released the track Assassin in 1998 with Singh as its subject. The Indian band Scapvengers also released an animated music video and track on his 75th death anniversary in 2015 titled Frank Brazil which was one of the aliases used by Singh. The Indian film industry has paid tribute to the legendary hero through a number of movies, including Sarfarosh, the story of Shaheed Udham Singh, 1976, 
Jallianwala Bagh in 1977, Shaheed Udham Singh 1977, Shaheed Udham Singh 2000, and the most recent film Sardar Udham in 2021, played by the actor Vicky Kaushal. In the field of literature, a biography titled The Patient Assassin, A True Tale of Massacre, Revenge and the Raj, was written by the British journalist Anita Anand. It was later renamed to Udham Singh, The Revenge of Jalian Balabak. The book portrays the life of Udham Singh and gives a glimpse into his character and personality. Mentions of his name can be found in the novel Shalima the Clown by Salman Rushdie. Conclusion Shaheed Udham Singh was a man who wore many hats. He was a manual laborer, a mechanic, a film actor, a freedom fighter and an avenger. Although he catapulted to infamy through the assassination of a prominent British figure, Udham Singh was more than the assassin that history painted him to be. He was the man who could not stand idly by when his country was being crushed under the British rule. He was a man of action who did not shy away from engaging in revolutionary activities to secure the freedom and justice that his people deserved. As was once stated, for every O'Dwyer, there is a Shaheed Udham Singh. And the actions and sacrifices of this legendary freedom fighter will forever be immortalized in the history of the Indian independence movement.